Thanks for staying with us in Talking Points. We are receiving Abdul Karim Ali. He's a Muslim scholar of the Christian Bible. You're welcome. Thanks for having me, Babila. We've not heard your voice since the President of the Republic announced the national dialogue to find a way out of the Anglophone crisis and other sociopolitical problems affecting Cameroon. What's your take on this? Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulullah ala ali wa sahabi ajma'in amma bad. I just praise God and I ask him to send blessings to Prophet and uh, um, all messengers that have been sent. Yeah, um, you can say that uh, you've not had my voice because... Well, it's not an important subject for me. It's actually not a dialogue. I'm surprised that Southern Cameroonians are in the, that presidency will bring out such communiques. That in English would be a dear trip. It's not an important subject for you? Yeah, it's not an important subject because um, when you want to converse with someone, you have to sit and determine what kind of conversations you need to have. Is it a debate, a dialogue, a dear trip, or maybe a monologue? And this one falls in between a dear trip and a monologue. So it makes it less important. And you can see um, um, that would have been an estimation initially, but now it's conclusive. You can see the chariot going on with, with the chariot that is supposed to go on, but already going on with people fighting for money. You can see the select group to go there. You can already see that. To me, it's not an important thing so far as Southern Cameroon is concerned. National dialogue. The president of the republic said a, a grand national dialogue. And you say it's a monologue. Why, why do you say it's going to be a monologue? Yeah, because that's what it is, actually. Who are the warring parties here? The Federalists who are jumping left and right and collecting money to go and represent who they have no mandate for. Have they fought any war? Have they been killed? No. So who is fighting with what? The government of La Republic of Cameroon is fighting with Southern Cameroonians who they have termed terrorists. These people refer to themselves as restorationists. If they would engage these people, then it could fit the qualification of a dialogue or a debate. As it is now, it is not even a monologue. It's a diatribe, a case where there is one um, opinion that is supposed to raise uh, emotions, bow bro the opinions of others, or make them forcefully reason with them. This is what is going to happen. You can see uh, the mandates that we are having is, is, is by and large not legitimate. Go and ask the people what their representation is, and you will realize that all the names you've seen flying in the air, chopping money which is not already gone in the air, this, we know this is what it's all about, have no legitimacy on the ground. Mm, but the President of the Republic said uh, armed groups were going to be invited, uh, those who are in the diaspora were going to be invited, um, and all persons were going to be brought on the board, even though what we are seeing now is uh, apparently... Uh, going away from that because we have lists of representatives to uh, consultations at the regional level made up of militants of the CPDM and to about 80 or 90 percent. You're pushing me to go into the textual and linguistic um, criticism of that paper that was read by the President of La Republic du Cameroon. Well, you can see that paper is, false of, is, is filled with false dilemma and equivocation. There's a lot of confusion. First of all, he, he wants to dialogue but he doesn't know who to dialogue with at the end of the day he cherry pick self-selective people that he wants to dialogue with so this is i think it is really not a good subject for me to address because i find it not important and um who, who, are, who are armed groups i thought they were terrorists and who, what do we define as armed groups those groups have to be defined by his terms let's understand who he's talking with and what and who is the diaspora we have to get clear definitions for, for these things and then it could begin to make sense but as i said the case between these two historic children of the United Nations cannot be resolved even with the fairest of dialogues. It has to be a debate and a negotiation. A debate is a case where two different opinions are on the table. I'm trying to convince you, trying to convince me, but to begin with, the two, there are two different opinions. This is where we are. We have to stop pretending. So you see, who are championing this? You see those that are championing it, federalists, who have not shed not a sweat, not to talk of blood. So it is a charade, a charade and predetermined to fail. Earlier in this newscast, we heard one of the inhabitants of Limbe in the opinions compiled by correspondent Davidson Maimo saying, if the separatists are not on the dialogue table, this event is going to produce no fruits, it's not going to produce the expected results. What do you think about that? No, he's 100% correct, but I'll add more. Separatists, which you address as that, which I'd say, um, um, restorationists, will not be on a dialogue table. They will be on a debate and negotiations table. This should be taken clear and clear. Look, you can kill me today. If you want, go and kill my entire family. Kill many families. It would come to a debate. 
Why? Because that is exactly what it is. Federalists are, and unionists are championing all this. You can see for money. They have no case for themselves. Talk less of case for the entire people of Southern Cameroon. And, and you see, I, I don't know. What did um, um, uh, uh, Peter Mapanyi Mosonge come to do in Bamenda? To collect opinions. Those opinions did not even survive the day on the table. They were thrown out the window. So what that, I don't know. Philemon Young and later Dr. John Guti and so on. No, that guy is, is a class prefect, Philemon Young, and he just came and behaved like a senior prefect who is supervising supper in a refectory and left. And this other one also came for, for parade to show up that he's a new prime minister. No, those are senior top officials of this uh, republic that we are talking about. And, and so, uh, so, so, so I'll address that. I'll address that. There is a man called Judas Iscariot. He's the, one of the earliest Christians. He's actually the fifth person Jesus Christ speak. To help you Christians understand Christianity, do you respect him today? Why don't you respect Judas? Because he's a traitor. You see your age mate? No, he's 2,000 years older than you. He saw Jesus, who you call your lot. But today you insult him. There's another one called Abu Lab and Abu Jahal. Those who betrayed Prophet Muhammad and insulted him. We Muslims don't respect them. Why? It's not because they didn't have good status in Saudi Arabia or in Jerusalem. No, but because they are not representing their people. So please, um, when we are here, when I'm on uh, this I, podium... I, are, you, are you saying that the authorities, the Prime Minister, and other persons who have been championing the cause for a return to normalcy, for a return to peace in the northwest and southwest regions of the country, are not worthy of respect, are not representing their people? Is that what you're saying? Oh, well, uh, you can define respect in various forms, but they're not representing their people. That is evident. You can't talk about a peace without addressing justice. Have these people been just? The answer is no. Are their children being slaughtered on a daily basis? The answer is no. Did, did they see baby matter being killed? The answer is yes. What have they done tangibly? There's no representation. And if, Babila, I will be anywhere, the first thing I'll do is that I'll represent my people. I'll represent their lives and their sweat. In all fairness and all honesty. So, I just brought this to say, when people expect respect, they should produce respect. If you and I cannot respect Judas and Abu Lahab and Abu Jal and Pharaoh, I wonder what we call respect today. Respect begets respect. If you cannot give respect, do not expect respect. Anyway, the National Dialogue has been convened and is scheduled for the 30th of September to the 4th of October. But you seem to be indicating that uh, what is going on today is just uh, uh, some sort of uh, a drama, as some people have called it, which is not going to yield the expected fruits. What should be done? Now, a drama is a senior thing in, in cinematography. You can call it a sketch in Form 2, maybe Form 2, Long La or Progressive, not even a boarding school. It's not going to work. That's a simple answer. What, what should be done? What should be done, we've said it and we're going to say it a billion times. You're going to release every Southern Cameroonian in the jail. You're going to demilitarize the zone so that people could stop being afraid. So that I now can stop being afraid. You are going to sign an accord that those that cannot come to this country because they are afraid will be able to come back and go to their homelands and then you're going to sit on a debate and negotiations table look it can take a century if we're ready to go that route but that is the end we are going to have it not necessarily abdul karim not necessarily all the names you hear in the diaspora not necessarily but it's going to happen and if we go to school to learn so we can understand and solve problems this is an inevitable truth if we agree it is true because Ivan Einstein says the failure to accept limitation is the failure to refuse change. And if you want to start changing big things, start changing the small things. I'm calling on all of these people who are now jumping with money and uh, looking for new suits and new autographs to go to Yaoundé. They should stand in the mirror. Look at that mirror. Talk to the person in the mirror. Ask the person in the mirror if it's okay. And if they want to start changing anything, they should start by changing the person in the mirror. There should be negotiation. It has to be. That's how it's going to end, Babila. Mm. All right. Negotiation between between the, the government and the Anglophones? No, between the, La Republic du Cameroon and the people of Southern Cameroon. It is a bitter pill. You know, when you take medications, nobody we, likes we, medication. We have one country, La Republic du Cameroon, the Republic of Cameroon. So are you talking about negotiation between the government and the people of the Northwest and the Southwest regions? No, a, a government does not negotiate between its people. But historically, you know, these are two countries. I don't know if you still need history classes on that. Uh, we've said it here many times. These are two countries and... Which came together and became one. There is no time. I need someone to show me how and when La Republic du Cameroon took ownership of that territory. There is no time. They came mm. together based on respectful and gentleman's argument, which has not worked. 
So they have to sit and negotiate. There is legal there is minds have been highlighting the point that there was no union treaty. No, legal, minds, legal minds don't need to, to highlight that from two students. There is no union treaty. You need to, st I mean, uh, Professor Anyangwe brought out an 18 pages um, of uh, resolution 1608. You need to, and what bothers me most, let's even assume there was a union treaty. Is that how you treat people who came into a union treaty with you? Kill them, maim them? No. So I, I'm saying that it's bitter, but at the end of the day, it's a bitter pill. You want to take medications to get well. Sometimes you, it's, it's not testing the mouth, but that is the thing you need. This is how this thing is. It's bitter to take, but the truth is it will end on a debate and negotiations table. Abdul Karim Ali, Muslim scholar of the Christian Bible, thanks for your time. Thank you so much. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us. That's it for today.